everyone make their way to the main gallery, please. to fall on you guys or anything. Oh, and there is no other side. Just be aware of phones. I think it'll be fine. We'll get us a cheer on. Perfect, thank you. I think it'll be fine. And it looks like tonight we are on track for another record of 77% yeah. margin. Amazing. Amazing. And really, we have to thank every single one of you who were with the mayor, stood with the city, and together we are making a difference. Before I go too far, I want to make sure that I introduce the people who work so hard on our campaign. One person who has been an amazing advisor, friend, and just leader, Ed Duggan. I want to thank you for everything, Ed, as always, for being an amazing friend. Our deputy campaign manager, Malak Bedoun. Malak, somewhere around here, making sure everything's going. And the amazing Ernest Johnson. The Ernest Johnson. Our field director, Robbie Frankel. Our data director, Ricardo White, over coalitions. And if you ended up following some of our social media, Nigel Black, who just did such a wonderful job as communications director. And the Sherry Johnson, who has been such an extraordinary outreach and someone who made sure that we connected with seniors and we did the work. Thank you to every sing and Mother Bernice, Mother Bernice, yes. Mother Bernice and Miss Richardson, there are eight million people I can name it. Ruben Bartel, so many people. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all of your help. And a very, very, very special thank you to the mayor who has spent years working to make a difference in our city and do it in a way where it was all about bringing people together, building community, making sure that everybody knows that they matter and everybody knows that they have a role. And he has been such a powerful force, not just in my life, but in the lives of so many across our city. And while I said that he was making history again with the margin by which we won, in January, he will make history again by being the second longest yeah. serving mayor yeah. in Detroit history. So further to our mayor, Mike Duggan. Hey. Thank you, Detroit. Uh, eight years ago, you took a chance on me, uh, and it's been quite a journey. Uh, and I'm here today, I want to start by introducing my family, my mother Joan, who was delivering food to the workers at the polls today. Uh, 
my sons uh, Ed and Patrick, uh, who are here, and my wife Sonia, who voted in the city of Detroit for the first time today. Uh, and Alexis Wiley, our great campaign manager. And for everyone in this city, uh, the 15,000 households that put my lawn sign uh, in their yard, the people every place I went, all I heard for the last six months is, we've got your back. Uh, we couldn't campaign the way I like to campaign. I'd rather be packed in the living rooms with 20 and 25 people at a time, uh, night after night. Uh, we're going to be back to those kinds of things before too many more months go by, but uh, I wasn't able to get out there that way, uh, but I deeply appreciate the way uh, this community supported me. Uh, and we're going to have a number of new members of City Council. Uh, and as the results come in, uh, I'll be congratulating those who are reelected and our new members, and I'm looking forward to sitting down with each of them to hear their vision of the city uh, and figure out how we can work together to serve all Detroiters, because that's what we're here to do. As for me, uh, I didn't run again because the work was done. Uh, we got a lot of work still to do. And so what's the next four years going to look like if you're in one of those neighborhoods that still has abandoned houses, even after we've taken 16,000 down, even after we've rehabbed 8,000? If you're still in a house with blight, we are going to get there in the next four years, and every single house is either going to be occupied or it's going to come down. We are going to remove blight from all of the neighborhoods. And if you're in a neighborhood with a lot of vacant land, with the new program at the land bank, we're going to make that land available to the neighbors so you can decide what do you want. Do you want a community garden? Do you want a park? We're going to move that property into the hands of the neighbors and create beauty in each of these communities. We're going to create beauty in our parks. You've seen it in the 150 we've talked about, but in the next couple of years, you are going to see two spectacular parks. One, Riverside Park, going to be built out. Southwest Detroit will finally have a first-class park along the water, as downtown and the east side have had for quite a while. And then the Ralph Wilson Park, which is going to be built near the post office uh, down there, will be something extraordinary. Detroit is going to make national headlines for the beauty that we are at. And for those of you who, like me, uh, are tired of the long-time eyesores. Uh, here's what you're going to see. Uh, next year, the train station, which has been vacant since 1980, is going to reopen and be the base of 5,000 more employees coming into the city. General Motors is adding 2,000 jobs in a plant that they had thought about closing just 18 months ago. The old Cadillac stamping plant, been sitting there on counter empty for 30 years, is being built into a brand new factory with 500 jobs making seats for Lear for those GM properties. And we are going to move over to the west side to that long abandoned AMC headquarters on Plymouth. We are going to redevelop that property. And we are, for the first time in 50 years, going to get rid of that Packard plant and redevelop that property. And when we replace those outdated factories with the jobs of the future, we're going to make sure, this is our vision the next four years, that Detroiters get those jobs. So just as when the new Jeep plant opened and 4,100 workers were hired for $40,000 a year jobs with benefit, and all 4,100 were residents of the city of Detroit. 4,000 more middle class jobs for our residents. But we're going to do the same thing as we add 2,000 jobs at Amazon at the abandoned state fairgrounds, and we're going to make sure that Detroiters have the qualifications. And so Detroit at Work is going to reach out in the city, and we're going to say, if you live here, you're going to have the opportunity for a good-paying job. And, and we're going to place a job here. If you don't have a high school degree, we're going to pay you to take those classes to get those degrees so you can apply to that job. If you've got a high school degree, but you want to add to your skills. We're going to pay to you to raise your skill level so we can keep getting companies to move in here. If you have a criminal record, you're a returning citizen. We are going to make sure that your talents are made available to our employers. We've already raised a thousand criminal records through Project Clean Slate and the expungement. We're going to move thousands more because we need the talents of everybody in this city. That's right. And if you've been locked for years in 
a cycle of intergenerational poverty with the Community Health Corps, we're gonna reach out to you, help stabilize your situation, and get you on track to get into a, to stabilizing your family and then giving you a chance to get into one of these jobs so you never have to worry about job security or financial security again. This is the vision that we have, that the recovery reaches every neighborhood to every family, and I am going to work at it every single day. Uh, tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., the cabinet's back at work. We're gonna have a party tonight. We're back at work at nine in the morning, and we're gonna keep working until we build this city that's one Detroit for all of us. Thank you, Detroit. Thank you.